All right, everyone. So for today, what we're going to do is some drawing again uh, to get us acclimated with the various tools of Animate with its power and, and honestly, with its weirdness. You're able to draw in a weird way, I think, here compared to other software. Uh, raise your hands. How many of you have experience drawing in Photoshop? Several people. Okay. Well, Photoshop is a uh, raster-based drawing program. Basically what you're drawing in Photoshop is a series of dots, dots in a grid. Uh, Animate, in contrast, is a vector-based drawing program. Both can create drawings that look very similar, but behind the scenes, drawings in Photoshop are dots, and in Animate they are equations, basically. So if we wanted to draw a circle in Photoshop, we get the brush, we draw a circle. If we then wanted to resize the circle, make it larger or smaller, um, Photoshop has to invent data in order to make it larger or smaller. Whereas in Animate, because it's a vector, it's equations basically, R equals five is a circle of radius five. But if we then need a larger circle, R equals 20, and the circle is bigger without losing quality. So Behind the scenes, raster vector, don't worry about that, but basically we'll be able to create drawings in Animate that are very, very high quality at various sizes. You resize the graphics smaller, larger, they should maintain their quality. Have you ever seen, for example, especially when something is printed out and you look at it and it's blurry and pixelated and you see the edges? Well, someone didn't use the right size of graphic when they printed it. You lo they lost quality. In Animate, that's not a problem. I can make a drawing one inch big on the screen here and then blow it up to as big as a wall, and it'll still look amazing quality, because it's all equations behind the scenes. You won't have to worry about those equations, but the uh, tangible aspect is that our drawing should look really nice. I have the Animate software turned uh, turned on. Uh, click on the Create New Column HTML5 canvas. We should be pretty much always working, be working with that one, HTML5 canvas, the latest and the greatest. So click on Create New HTML5 canvas. I get here a blank document, which is the best thing and the worst thing for every artist. This is so much possibility that I can do here. <coughs> Where do I start? So I'm going to do File, Save As. Let's save our work. You should have a flash drive, hopefully, to start to save your work. Save As. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. And I will save it as, I'll put today's date, 2016.02.05 or 6? What's today? 6. 2017, yeah, wrong year. <laughs> That's the more important part. 2006, 2017, oh, yes. I guess we're also scarred from 2016 that it's hard to let go. Okay, 2017, uh, save that. Okay, so here's how we're going to start this. We're going to write, we're going to craft, yes. Question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, was trying, I was looking at the demonstrations from sure. our previous one. Sure. And I noticed there's an up the warning uh, here. Because I remember in the original class, they just give you like a little small frame and uh -huh. you can actually see your animation at work. Mm -hmm. But now it opens a, um, an HTML. Um, a browser. web browser. Yeah, web browser. Yeah. So I was wondering if that's just an error on the animation or. That's giving. That's giving us an error that for the moment doesn't mean anything to us because that's talking about code okay. and other things that we'll get to eventually. So for right now, it's going to be annoying that we're going to see that and errors are annoying. But uh, it, we should just ignore it for the moment because eventually we'll be able to fix that error and it won't bother us. Okay. So just for the moment, ignore it. Um, we're going to write or we're going to create, we're going to craft our initials. But we're not going to use the brush tool. We're going to use simple shapes. So on the right side, on the tool panel, you will see various shapes, squares or rectangles, ovals or circles, and polystar, which will allow us to create uh, triangles, hexagons, etc. 
let's do this. Let's click the rectangle tool keyboard shortcut R. So simply with the letter R, you can activate the rectangle. And this shows that we have both the stroke and the fill. The stroke is the outside color, the frame of our shape. Um, it's the pencil. Next to it, we have the fill, the inside color. If I draw a little circle, I see that. I see that there's a black, or square. I see that there's a black outline and a blue fill. I'm going to take that back, undo that. Um, I have various sizes of stroke. If I just choose whatever size, 17, draw it again. Now I've got a really thick stroke, a really thick border around the shape. Undo that again. Remember, the printer's a little noisy, so during the lecture, it's good not to print. The stroke, sometimes I don't want a stroke. Sometimes I don't want an outline around my shapes. So I can turn off the stroke by clicking on the color. Stroke. And we have this one right here, no color. Like crossed out color. Click that. I don't want a stroke. I don't want an edge or a border around my shape. It'll cross it out. I can add one in later if I really wanted one, but for the moment, I don't want a stroke. I want to make some shapes, but I don't want outlines around them. Hello. So I'm going to use a strokeless shape. Any color you want. We've got all the colors. Click on that. So I'm going to draw a, a shape. I can draw a tall rectangle. I can draw a wide rectangle. I can draw a square. Sometimes your square is not perfect. If you want a perfect square, you can hold shift. I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and click and drag, and that's a perfect square. So let's draw a square, a perfect square. Hold down shift, and then drag and draw a square. Let's switch over to the selection tool, V, for a very good selection, the selection tool. And if you double click your shape, it will select it. You can move it. Let's say I drew a perfect shape, and I want two copies of it. Copy and paste will work, but what also works is if you hold Alt on the keyboard, click and drag, and it makes a copy. With the Select tool, the black arrow, first double click the, the square, and then on the keyboard hold Alt, click and drag, and you get a perfect copy. You can get as many of these as you want. Alt, click and drag, gives you copies, perfect copies, of what you uh, have drawn. So I'm going to drag a copy right over there. Now as I was saying about the coolness, about the weirdness of animate is this. I drag this copy of this square and I'm going to drop it on top of this other square and then I'm going to click on the background to deselect. It's no longer selected. If I double click the square I just let go of, now they both select. They've both merged. So two shapes have merged into one. They were separate shapes. They've become one shape. I can't separate them anymore. The reason for that is that any shapes that are the same color, when you put them together, they merge. Let me go back, undo that. Before they were merged, they were two distinct objects. Once I put one on top of the other, even a little piece, I'm going to have the little corner right there touching. I'm going to click elsewhere to deselect. That's one shape now. So a couple of squares have become one shape. Now when I double click the object, the whole object selects. And look at that. I can alt drag that object, and I've got a copy of that. And I can then put it over here and merge that. Click this, put it on top of that, click, and that's merged.
you know, this computer here may be cursed or something, it keeps crashing. I would recommend you switch right over here. They're all PCs now. They're all PCs. <laughs> There's a slant of course on them. There's something wrong with that one. Hopefully we'll get those new ones soon. So here, uh, now those four separate shapes have become one shape together. So I'm going to move that off of, off to the side here. Remember, only the stuff in the uh, stage, in my case, the white background, only that will actually show up when I test or when I run my project. Anything outside of it doesn't. I also, myself, I'm going to need to zoom in and zoom out because the my screen is different than yours. Remember, zooming in, zooming out, a quick way is control plus and minus on your keyboard. Sometimes I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to zoom in really close to make some details. And sometimes I'll need to zoom out. OK, so I'm going to draw another a square or rectangle, some other color. Then I'm going to switch over to the uh, oval tool, the circle. If I click that one, I'm going to switch to a different color for my circle. I'm going to draw a circle over there. I've got a square, I've got a circle. If I double click the circle to select it, and put it on top of somewhere of the square and click elsewhere. A moment ago, I showed you that if you put shapes together, they merge. But wait a minute. Now if I move this circle away, it cut it. What was the difference between the two things I did? They're different shapes. Yes, one more thing. What else is different? Colors. Different colors, yes. So the big important thing here is that when fl uh, Animate sees objects of the same color, they merge. And when they're different colors, they cut each other out. So this can be a red color and a slightly darker red color. It still will cut. So just to show that, I'm going to go back. This was a r clearly a red color, but instead if I choose a green color that is slightly darker or lighter and put them together anywhere that the one color is on top of the other color and then I double click to move it and select it it cut it so this is something very valuable as I said we're gonna write our names in a moment I'm still kind of showing you this concept because we're gonna make our names out of shapes we're gonna cut and merge shapes together to get the feeling about how this all works. So that circle has been cut into that square. We've been working with a white piece of paper, so to speak, a stage that is white, like a sheet of paper. If I want to change the color of my sheet of paper, with the Select tool, click the background to select the stage. I'm going to have here a color stage. Working with the white color is the default, but we can choose other colors. And this will make more sense or be more important later when we're making real drawings and we're filling in the colors of our character. Oftentimes, if we leave it as white, we forget that we drew something on a spot or we forget that there's an empty spot of color. So I'll remind us of this. But we can change the color of our sheet of paper. I personally like to have it on like a really light gray because as you get more involved with drawing, again, you're going to think, I filled in the colors of the eyes of my character, which are usually white. But actually, I didn't. I never colored the whites of the eyes. So when I then animate it, the, the character walks on a red background and suddenly he's got red eyes, because I never colored in the pupils of the eyes white. Being in a, like a gray background reminds me there is no color in that spot. It's empty. Speaking of it being empty, this shape here is defined and it's been cut out. I can fill that color in also. Paint bucket. A lot of you have experience, it seems, in Photoshop, and some of these tools are very similar to Photoshop, like the paint bucket. Click the paint bucket, keyboard shortcut K, 
and then I've got the paint bucket the fill color I'll choose some other color click inside of the the empty shape and it's colored it that's now a new independent shape I can click and select and drag that so this is I think the fun and the weirdness of, of animate these are shapes these are mathematical constructs they are mergeable cuttable croppable um, malleable very interesting if I were to fill in another color again drag that shape out and now those two shapes are merged we have also the simple shape of the polystar I'm going to move some of these things off of my stage polystar okay we have squares and rectangles we have circles and ovals we have polystar click on the polystar it doesn't have a keyboard shortcut I think you can define keyboard shortcuts but there's no built-in one and if I click and drag I get that shape what shape is that one less Pentagon. There's a pentagon. Five shapes. Five sides, that is. This one can have multiple sides, poly, star. Click on options of the tool. And here we can define a few aspects. First of all, do we want a polygon? Do we want a star? How many sides? So if I put six, then it's a hexagon, eight octagon, sides three. What kind of what kind of gon is a three? Triangulagon. Three. So we can do triangles, octagons, etc. Decepticon. Too many. <laughs> so here's different shapes. Those two triangles touch, so they become one shape. Right now we're just playing with the various shapes. The big idea is colors like colors merge, different colors cut. It'll be a very powerful concept as we go on. Any, any questions so far? Let's make a new layer. Let's hide this layer. Let's also turn it into a guide so that it doesn't show up when we actually animate. Um, how that is done, we, we talked about it last time, but how that is done is you click the column where you've got the eye that'll hide it but I want to deactivate it I want to turn it into a guide so right click layer one and set that to a guide now it's hidden and unusable by the rest of the uh, design and we'll create a new layer having this knowledge so far we can start to do what I'm saying about our, our initials. So my initials are VMC. I want to create uh, some shapes merging and cutting to be able to make my initials. So I'm going to start off first with a square. we will be able to curve shapes as well. We start off with straight angles, and then I'll show you how to curve them as well. So let's start with a square rectangle. So 
a Kyle and Jacob question. Okay. I'm going to start off with this shape, and I may want to reuse it. Maybe I drew a shape perfectly. I want to reuse it. Remember, these are the, these are going to merge and cut and, and change. So I'm going to go back to the Select tool and select it in Alt, drag a copy off to the side. I may use that shape later. I'm going to protect it by putting it off to the side and using a working copy. In my case, I want to make a V. Now, perhaps, just to start off, we've all got different initials, but just to start off, maybe let's write my initials for a moment just to kind of get the idea of how you might do this, and then we'll figure out how to do it with your particular initials. I want to make a V out of this square. Here's one way that I could do it. I'm going to drag, Alt-drag, another copy of the square. I'm going to change its color because I want to use that as a way to cut out from the square. So it's selected. I'm going to switch over here where the current fill color is of this shape. I'm going to change it to some other color. Red. And I want to use the, the corner right here. I want to use the tip of this shape to cut a V shape right here. This corner would be nice to cut a V shape. I need to rotate it first. I need to rotate that so that that can cut a V. We have a tool to let us rotate, shrink, grow shapes. It's this one on the top right corner, the free transform tool. Q, maybe for quick transform. With the free transform tool, what I get now are these handles on the side of the shape, which then allow me to stretch the shape, to grow the shape, shrink the shape. Or if you put your mouse near the edge, but not actually touch one of the control points, you can rotate the shape. I want to rotate it so that the point, one of the corners, points down. Now it's a diamond. So the square, I've just rotated it over with the free transform tool, Q. I'll switch over to the selection tool, V, and put it on top of the square. I'm going to then click elsewhere to deselect. After you've deselected is when it actually does the merging or the cutting. If it's still selected, it won't do it. So I've deselected it. I'll reselect it, move it away, and now I've got a cutout shape. Okay, I'm going to leave that I'm going to leave that diamond shape alone for a moment. Out of this square, I'm kind of thinking about designing a kind of a V shape, and this will obviously be, be very uh, uh, subjective and artistic how you define these letters. But I want to make then now the point of the V down here. I want it apex down here, a merge down here somehow to come down. Okay, there's a point down there. What if I can get the point of this and put it down here to make a V shape? It won't work. It won't work because it's different color will cut it. Different colors. So what about if we make it the same color? Let's select uh, the diamond again. The color here if I click, I forgot exactly what shade of blue. And they've got to be the exact same shade. So the cool thing that you can do is, once you click to select the shape, instead of picking from your options, you move your mouse to the color you're trying to extract or match. It'll say, OK, you want that color, that exact color, whatever formula that color is. And then that shape will be the exact color, which then should merge.
So if I get that shape and put it as the point, that'll be a cool point. But wait, it's also then merging at the top and getting all weird. So the opposite. I'm going to grab that original shape and put it on top to get that point. But wait a minute. Now they're the same shape. So now they've merged again. Okay, this is what I'm trying to get at, that to think outside the box, because these shapes and the way Animate deals with it. So, okay, I'm going to put that color back the way it was, some other color. Then I'm going to get the top of the V and then put it on top of the point. Well, what that will do is that will cut away this piece and this piece and this piece and keep this piece. <coughs> Now you may be a perfectionist like me, and you don't like that it's got those tiny little points sticking out. If you're trying to drag this perfectly so that it lines up, it may kind of be jumping around and, and it's not doing what you want. That's because we've got this magnet turned on here. These shapes, the edges especially, want to kind of jump together, and oftentimes that's useful. But sometimes, like now, I'm trying to move this exactly where I want it, and it's kind of jumping around. It may be useful to turn this on or off, this magnet option of the select tool. Snap to objects. I'm going to turn it off. And now I can move this, I should be able to move this wherever I want. Also, if I zoom in, I should maybe be able to put it exact. And to get even more exact, instead of using the clumsy mouse, what I could do is I can select the object, and with the arrow keys on the keyboard, I can move it exactly perfectly where I need this to be. Now if I deselect that right side of the shape, select and delete on the keyboard. The left side of the shape, I'll click to select, delete on the keyboard. Top, click, delete. I'm getting a V-like shape. I need to get that point the same color. So now I can use the eyedropper function of the paint bucket. Click the paint bucket. Click up the color you're matching, same color, they merge. You've got one shape. Yes, takes more effort than if you've gotten your fo favorite font and written your name. But here again, I'm trying to think in breaking this down into shapes and merging and cropping. And this came from two squares. So I've got a V shape. Let's say I want to do the M, V, M, C, question. So they should have merged, got some cropping and merging going on. I'm going to save. What's that? Squat Castle? Squat Castle? I haven't seen it in a little while, but maybe. Or a fox or something. So, okay, with, uh, I want to maybe make the, uh, the M. I'm going to drag another copy of the, of that square. I'll drag the copy out. I want to punch out that top angle again. Well, I've got the angle shape there, the point. So I'll need a copy of that, or I can reuse the same one. But I'll make a copy of that and change its color. So I'll use that to punch out a shape on top here. <laughs> I'm going to pull up a little bit later uh, this article. Did you know that the current Twitter logo is made completely of circles? You may not be able to visualize it at the moment, but we'll look at this article a little later. They used only perfect circles to make the new Twitter logo. So 
So here I've cut out that shape again. I want to, I'm envisioning. Ooh. This one? Yeah. Let's give it a try. Turn around, go under the... Let's give it a try. Uh, I'm going to uh, get that one, and you said flip it over like 180 degrees? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try that. Let's see what happens. That shape that I've got selected, you can do the right click, and you can go to Transform, and that'll let you quickly rotate it. So I want to flip this shape up. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to right click, Transform, flip vertical. Vertical is up and down, so that'll flip it upward. And then we'll put it up here, down here. Deselect. Could be an abstract M, looking a little bit like an H to me. Did I put it in the right spot? Two arrows? Possible. If you make your uh, green triangle, oh yes, okay, smaller, like like this, yeah, okay. Or or hmm. That could be another way. See that? So something like that, deselecting and then putting it there. Smaller, possibly. That could be an M. That's what? That's more M-ish. More M-ish. So there's no wrong answer to this. We just kind of brainstorm a couple of ideas here. Maybe you have a better idea. Try it. Um, Vince, you were saying another way as well, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, just take the arrow, like the, the orientation back to the way it was, and shrink it a little bit, and then uh, merge it, and then cut Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> another way let's let me do that one if we have our shape our original sort of like swap cast shape and then I resize it a little bit the free transform tool lets you remember rotate resize it grow it shrink it so with the free transform and I go back to the corner make that object a little smaller and then I can get that Put it there. Depending on its shape and depending how you align it, you know, you get different results. There's that M's kind of looks a little off center. Maybe I want to make it smaller. No wrong answer really. I'm just showing you different possibilities. So maybe I need to shrink that a little bit more with some proportion. Move it in here. Maybe the snap would help me out again. If I turn snap to object back on, may or, it may or may not. Maybe the arrows will work to really align the object where I want it to, want it to be. So with my arrows, I can get artistic here. What if I have the, that chevron shape a little bit higher, like this, and now I get a little flourish at the bottom of the M, some serifs simply putting the shape in a slightly different spot. See right here. Maybe I'm thinking of having it here. And you see what kind of M that'll make a sans serif shape, uh, a shape, a, a letter that's blocky. But if, if I just drag that up just a little bit with my arrows on the keyboard, I can make these like little feet. shape I'll move it off to the side there okay so let's say I want to then do the C VMC I could do it in uh, straight lines and that'd be fine. That would be a good uh, artistic design. Let's see about maybe curves. We can make curves 
out of straight lines. This is this drawing tool is completely malleable. If you don't know what that means, it means shapeable, bendable, malleable. So I want to start with another one of those squares. And the C obviously is a kind of a curve. I want to start maybe first cutting the, you know, the inner part of the C. I want to start cutting out over here and then see about curving it. <coughs> well, here's another cutout point. I've got a point. Now, in that particular one that I have there, however, I did make it smaller. It's in a smaller proportion than the other ones. So I may want to then go back to my original rectangle or square over here, change that one to some other color, transform it at an angle again, so I can cut out the um, the part of the C. So I can rotate this to various degrees. OK, so abstract C, I could say that's a C, but let's talk about then curving straight lines. This is a lot easier than you think. I'm going to switch over to the selection tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You saw that if we double click an object, it selects it completely and we can move it. If you go to the edge of an object, to the edge of a shape, you get close to the edge, you will see your cursor change to show you. You can turn this into a curve. If I'm at a certain angle, for example, like right there, it says you're about to manipulate an angle. Over here, you're about to manipulate a curve. So if I click and drag there, I can start to curve that straight line. So I'm just going to the edge of any straight shape clicking and dragging. Even this completely straight shape on the left, or angle, Now that looks almost like, well, I could have started with a square and put a circle on it to get that perfect curve. Yes, I could have. I didn't think of it. You didn't think of it. <clears throat> so I could have then started with different shapes. But just to kind of go on the same path as before, straight angles, and then kind of manipulating it. I'm not quite loving that C, but it's a work in progress. But the point here is I can grab these edges that were previously straight and start to curve them. I'm going to try that again. I'm not liking how that's looking. I can easily delete it. I'll drag another copy of the square. If you like yours, keep it. But I'm going to start again. I'm going to switch over then to a different uh, shape, the uh, oval, different color. So here also, if I don't hold Shift, I won't get a perfect circle. Here it's kind of an oval, which may work. We'll see. But if I wanted a perfect circle, I hold Shift, and that'll be a perfect circle as I click and drag. I thought of another idea. What if instead I start with the circle, and I just cut out a shape from the circle instead of trying to cut shapes from the square? That might work. So what I'm getting at is I've got the circle that might be the, the C, and then I get the square. And from the square, shrink that down and use that as a way to cut out a shape to give me a C. Back. 
could be a way. That could be another way to draw that. C, I could then go in if I wanted and further curve this out here. Maybe. So let's say for practice, this is, these are my initials drawn with, with shapes. I want to kind of line them up and uh, make sure they're, they're, they're still part of the same idea. Uh, we have rulers that we can use to make guides, like in Photoshop. Let's go to the View menu and select Rulers. Handy keyboard shortcut, Control-Shift-Alt-R. You can do it all with one hand, it's pretty impressive. So if I activate Rulers, the point of this is then I can make guides. I can make points, starting points, where I can make my drawings. If you click from the top ruler and click down, you'll get a straight line. I can use that as a guide. The C is a little too high up. If I click and drag from the top again, let's say my baseline will be the M. So if, that is, if those are my guides that my shapes should kind of inhabit this space, well, I need to shrink the C a little bit. I, I need to shrink the V or maybe further edit the V a little bit. And this, I could have said, there's my VMC, I'm done. That, that'd be fine. I'm showing you here that perhaps thinking in terms of consistency, the letters don't quite feel like they're part of the same character set. The M has these little serifs, these little feet. What if I did something like that for the V up here? Now that I say I could do it here, perhaps I can do it there. I might have to start over, but I could do that. Maybe I want to put those little hooks as well on the C. That'll make it more consistent, that it looks like this, these characters relate to each other. A good font relates, all the letters relate. I didn't plan that originally, and that's OK. But here now, with these guides, I'm figuring out maybe then I need to shrink this a little bit. In my case, I need to shrink the V so that it falls within the guides. If I grab the bottom edge and start to drag it up, the top edge also shrinks. That's annoying. The way to deactivate that is if you hold Alt and drag from the bottom, only the bottom piece will shrink. Without Alt, the top and the bottom shrink in, in, a, in a mirror reflection. Alt V. Switch over to the uh, free transform tool first, Q, and then select the, the item. No, the rulers. Oh, the rulers. Uh, did you activate your rulers first? Go to View Menu and then Rulers. And you can click from the ruler down to create a guide. Now the free transform can also let you skew your objects. If you put your mouse between two control points, you'll be able to skew it like this. So that free transform is very powerful. Grow, shrink the objects, uh, squash them, stretch them, skew them, rotate them. Depends where you put your, your mouse with that free transform tool. You're able to do other weird distortion things like this, which we'll talk about later. But now I've distorted the shape, kind of like at an angle. I'm going to drag that up. And so now the shapes fit in a unified um, space, top and bottom. Is there a way to make only one point stretch and not the whole thing? There is. That's the one that I was saying. We'll, we'll look a little bit later. But the way to do that, if you 
quickly want to see is if you hold control and click one of those, then you'll move your point. Okay, so some shapes have become words, my initials. Uh, we can further manipulate these things. I'm going to uh, I'm going to I want to leave alone what I've what I've worked with so in a I, I, I want to copy and paste basically what I've worked with into a new layer this that I've created so far it might work I don't I don't want to mess it up so we've got layer one we've got layer two I want to make a layer three but I want to bring into layer three what I've worked with on layer two if you right click layer two down on your timeline right click duplicate layer that gives you a copy of layer two I want to hide the original layer two and I want to turn it into a guide So I've made a copy of everything that I worked on in layer two, copied it over to layer two copy, which I can double click to rename layer three, if you want. So I copied everything. The point of that is I want to further explore how these shapes can be manipulated. I said that everything that we do deal with in um, animate behind the scenes it's a mathematical formula it's made out of uh, control points that there's a point here with a straight line coming out of it or a curved line we can peel back the curtain and see those control points and further manipulate the uh, the shapes so with my copy on layer 3 if you go this time to the white arrow, the sub-selection tool. The selection tool lets you manipulate the whole object. Sub-selection tool will let you manipulate the individual points that a shape is made out of. So it's the white arrow. Click on that. Keyboard shortcut A. Click one time on the edge of a shape. And then points appear. Six, six points appear on this object, on that shape. If you click on the M, more appear. Because wherever there's a change, either a change of a curve or a change of an angle, its points appear. So if I click, the points appear of the V. And what I can do there is then manipulate individual points. So I can do a really sharp angle right there. go the opposite way also. Now I'm drawing a uh, hexagon. So same thing, I can click on the edge of the M and then drag a point down. And now there's a different style there. It was perfectly ordered a moment ago based on basic shapes. But I can then go in and manipulate each individual point. And there I've got a Pac-Man shape. So I can click to the edge of any of these shapes and then make a different kind of shape. you can select more than one of these points because sometimes let's say I want to move let's say I want to move the top points of the V if I click one time on a, sh on a point it selects it and then I can use the arrow keys here as well with the arrow keys, I can 
click to move a, a point in any direction I want. Well, it's going to take tedious to click it 20 times. If you hold Shift and click the arrow keys, you'll move it faster. It's like 10 or 15 points at a time. So instead of trying to move the mouse clumsily, I could move exactly three taps, shift taps to the right to make that M move over there. Click on that one, shift one, two, three to the left, and you know manipulate it so that it uh, moves over. I see when I drew those shapes originally I hadn't lined things up perfectly so there's actually a little bit of leftover there. In my case then there's two points there I can kinda see them if I really zoom in I see it right there. Oh, there's two points the two shapes created that so it's giving me a little bit of trouble trying to move it because there were two shapes there, or two points there so the way that I can fix that is with the subselect tool I can click and make a selection like this instead of clicking on an individual point I can click and drag a selection now whatever was there both of those points got selected so click and drag and then I can change it so that's what I'm trying to do It didn't. You can delete one. I can delete one definitely. Right now, I just selected them to move them both, but it might be better to clean up the shape with deleting some points. But we'll talk about that advanced pen tool stuff eventually. So here, then, uh, there's a couple of points, and I move them around, and I'm uh, making something different out of that shape. Uh, again, with the sub select tool, I can select. A point and with the arrow keys I can start to manipulate it more. We'll have a uh, more more practice with this. Um, but let's take a quick break. When we come back, well, we'll see about thinking of some other letters. We did my letters. Maybe we'll practice some other letters. And then we'll see also about uh, creating actual interesting shapes. My goal is uh, we're going to draw, think about using shapes to draw uh, like logos and such, perhaps. But it's 11.13. We'll take a short break until 11.20, so about seven minutes. We'll be back at 11.20, and then we'll do a little more lecture. If you need any help, call any of us over.